Welcome everyone to another episode of Rick's Gadgets. Uh, today I want to show you a little bit about my new 3D printer here. Uh, this is a clone of the uh, Prusa uh, Mark III and I got this off of AliExpress and it comes as a kit with all the hardware. You just have to do the printing of the uh, PETG parts which are basically the the display there and the motors and around to the side here with the you've got the control housing but uh, everything here uh, had to 3d print and the kit went together really easy um, no issues really as far as the assembly goes all the parts were there had extra parts um, the printer works great um, we've got the original uh, Prusa as you can see here this is our original one and it's uh, you know we've had it for three years now four years ran quite a bit of filament through it I pulled up the stats and I think we'd reset it once but it's showing 2500 meters of uh, filaments run through this one had no issues out of this other than the the heating fan here um, it has a short in the back and they've tried to fix that on the new one but uh, I think the strain relief on it is still not quite up to par but other than that the original one here has done great but back to the clone here um, this one is uh, gonna be mine my other one the other proves of the original is my son's actually so this one is gonna be mine and what I've done is it's got the newer head on it. Um, it's more compact. You can see the uh, print fan there is at an angle. Penda probe still on the side. Um, and overall, everything's worked great. The only issue I had was in long prints, I was finding some melting of the uh, around the hot end. And I did go in and replace the fan. The fan. I uh, didn't have as large of blades and I got this one off of Amazon and so far I haven't noticed any issues with any melting around the hot end so I'm hoping that this is going to solve the problem and uh, that's the uh, my replacement and I actually am using the other one that was on it here as the cooling for the NC board so anyway um, but I don't want to show you the build or anything because there's been tons of those out there. I want to show you how I have set up my Raspberry Pi to control this. And I've got it all mounted in one box. And so far it's working out really well. So I want to go in and show you how I've configured this clone to use Octopi with a Raspberry 3 built in and powered off of the PSU that's built into the... Um, 3d printer so let's cut over to that so around here on the side I have this new box and I will provide the link for the one that I used uh, to print this um, what I found out was uh, the box works fine but the holes did not line up so I had to drill new holes and I had to use standoffs in there actually here's one just a little standoff and that way able to get it to clear the motor mount once I get the cover on. And over here on the side, uh, down in there, that's my buck converter. That's powered off of the NC board, stepping down the voltage to 5 volts, which then feeds into the Raspberry Pi here. And then, those are the two headers here. Then the other three headers I run up and just connect directly into the NC board here. And I'll provide close-up pictures with better light on it so you can kind of see the connections. And off of this also, I'm running the uh, five volt fan, the one that I mentioned before that I had to replace. Um, and that's just running on the cover here. So it'll provide cooling for both the Pi and the, uh, the NC board itself. And the Pi itself mounts in here, and I'm going to mount it, and I'll show you a picture of how it looks mounted with the cover ready to go on. Okay, here's everything mounted with the Pi ports coming out of the back. 
And the only negative that I've seen so far with this setup is with the pie mounted this way, is if you're going to run the camera off of the header boards, you're going to have to come off from the inside, and you could feed it through one of the vent holes. Uh, but of course, it'd be nicer if the pie was oriented the other way. But uh, but this will work. I'm going to use a USB webcam for now, so it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm going to put the cover on, power it up, and show you how everything works. Okay, now here's everything all buttoned up. And as you can see, it fits real nice in there. Um, you do have access to the SD card there. And I positioned the motor here where you can kind of see the, um, the, the difference that it takes between that fan and how I had to put the spacer in there to get the clearance. Because uh, it's a pretty tight fit. But it, it does clear it, no issues with any of the cables coming out of it. So now I want to go into the uh, programming of the, the Raspberry Pi and configuring the Octoprint with the way I have it, this configured. Because there's a few extra settings that I had to figure out how to get hooked up. But anyway, now let's cut over to the computer and I'll show you the setup for there. Okay. So to start off with, I'm not going to go into the details of getting your image set up for Octoprint. I went to the Octopi uh, home, or website here and got the latest version <clears throat> and just followed the steps on creating the image and placing it on the, the Raspberry Pi. And the key thing to point out here is, is to make sure that you do the, the new Octopi network um you want to um actually you want to use the wpa succulent dot text this one is no longer uh in use anymore so you want to make sure you update this with your wi-fi settings uh because that way you'll be able to remote into the uh, raspberry pi once it's uh booted up and ready to go so the i followed the instructions here uh, and I'm going to provide links to all these below. But this is the tutorial I use for connecting the NC to the Raspberry Pi. Because there's a few settings that I had to change. And even from this profile or this um, tutorial, I had to make a couple modifications. Um, and the first here is on the header pins. Um, here you can see he's supplying the power. And there's two data lines and then two GPIO lines. I omitted this one, and I'm going to show it here on the picture of the one, because this is technically another ground, which is you don't need. And for some reason, I, would, I guess with the serial connection, it was with that extra ground, it was causing interference. I could never get it to connect. So I removed this wire. So I only have the, the power in the ground, the two transmit, and the one GPIO. And I don't think that this one's even needed. I left it in there because I had it working. But to be honest, the, the, the NC is not running the power to the, the Pi, like in this instance. What I used was a buck converter, and these are really cheap out on Amazon. I can provide a link to the ones I use below. Um, but what I did was I hooked up the 24 volt coming from the power supply into here. And there's a, mine has a little pot screw on it that you can screw down, and it took like 20 or 30 turns counterclockwise and with a voltmeter I just checked to make sure I got five volts coming out. So this is going to give you that three amp continuous power that the Raspberry Pi needs to run and not bog down if you're running a lot of applications on it. And what you do is once this is hooked up these uh, positive and negatives they go to the Raspberry Pi here. So that's what's supplying the power to the Pi not the NC board. So just keep that in mind. And here's another example of his, how he's got it uh, set up. Now, another thing that I noticed too, uh, I, I would get it to work. And then when I would put the wires back in the case, I would notice and it would stop work. You have to make sure that these pin headers are pushed down on these pins very hard um, and into the NC board. And I also supplied a little bit of a twist. I twisted the wires a couple of times because I heard of some people having interference with all the other connections in the box. 
and that can kind of eliminate some signals that could be crossing over on that serial connection. So if, you, if you're having issues, remember to remove that one ground wire here and also twist the wires, your serial wires, a couple of times. Because if you look at Cat5 Cat cables, you'll notice that those are twisted in pairs. And that's to eliminate some of those uh, signals that could creep into the line by nearby electronics. So I got everything wired up and got it powered up. And here he was just showing how you connect it up and connect it into the, the GPR, the NC board here. Now, one thing you want to do is make sure you turn on the, the Raspberry Pi port in the, on the Raspberry, or actually the printer, and make sure it's configured. And the next is we have to go into the Pi and do some configuration. So, like I said, I'm not going to go into the details of installing your, your image, but here I'm just going to log in, and I'm using PuTTY, and you're just going to go in, if I can get the address right, and I looked on my router and found this, um, my IP address. That way I know that I am have the right IP address. So you can see here I'm in the Octopi. And what we're going to do is we're going to go change these boot uh, configuration files. And we're also going to change um, a, uh, another file that I got off of another website. So first, let's go in here. And we are going to go into change here. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to leave the commands that we type in here so you can just cut and paste. And you don't have to do this. And just provide your password and on this one you're going to go down to the very bottom and you're going to add these two lines and that once you do that I've already got them here because like I said I've been testing this out you're just going to control X and if you've made a change it's going to give you the option to do yes or no so you want to save okay now then Let's go over to the next configuration. This one I got off of another, another website, so um, I am going to click over to it. Okay, so the second one here is we're going to get from the actual Prusa website, and this is off of their, their configuration. And I started following this, and I just jumped over to the other one, but the other one did not do the um, disabling the serial command line. So what you want to do is to go in here. Oops, let me copy this. Go back over to my putty. And all you want to do is delete the console equals serial all the way up to the 115200. So the only thing you should have starting with is console TTYL. And then once you do that, you'll just do Control X and say do yes for save. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is go into the configuration and make sure your serial connection is turned on. And so what we're going to do is go back over here. And we're going to go to the configuration. And here, you, if, if you have different things like your interfacing options, you can turn your camera on if you have a Pi camera hooked up to it. Um, you can go in and make various connections. But what I'm going to do is go down here to Serial. And would you like Login Shell be accessible in Serial? I'm going to do No on this one. Would you like the Serial port to be enabled? Make sure this one's set to Yes. Okay, and then we're just going to go down here and finish. And normally here we would do a, re a reboot. And we'll do that sudo. Okay. So now while that's rebooting, we're going to go back over here to Octoplant. And let this come back up now. Okay, now that it's loaded up, let's go up here and go to our connections. And in here, we have the options. I was using the TTYS0. 
I tried that. That was in one of the tutorials. But I wound up getting the, the AMA Zero uh, to work. So you want to add that in to the uh, additional serial ports at, at 115200. And we're going to save. And once we do that, we can come up here and select that with 115200 and connect. And there we go. We are now connected. So you can go in and and see your options and or you know, check change your temperatures control. I do have the webcam set up. I've got to adjust it a little bit. Um, but that is it. So um, like I said in the beginning when I hooked this up, I did have issues, you know, with the Pi and all the connections and removing that one wire and twisting it a little bit uh, together helped. Um, I have added the additional fan onto the side and it's running off of the five volt pins. I may change that to the three because uh, it's a three wire fan, which means if you only hook up positive and negative, it runs wide open. So I am going to probably put that down to the three volt and see how it does on three if it provides enough cooling because right now it's very loud uh, while it's running. So anyway, um, but if you have any questions or if you, anything you want me to test out between the original Prusa and the clone, let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button if you like this video. And I will be bringing you some additional content later, uh, some more projects that I'm doing here with the new printer and some of my home automation projects. So look forward to seeing you come back and check out those videos. And thanks and have a great day.